Welcome to our service of the Word this fifth Sunday of Easter. The Gospel reading today portrays Jesus as the true vine, God as the vine cultivator, and with ourselves described as being the branches of the vine. Easter celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If God raised his Son from death to life, bringing victory out of disaster, he can also renew human lives. Feelings of failure, rejection or resentment are changed into opportunities for healing, forgiveness and service. So we begin our service this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus Christ, as we celebrate your victory over all the powers of darkness, evil and death, we pray that we will know your strength to rise above our fears and failures and travel on with you in the way of love. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
So we come to our time of penitence. In God's holy presence, let us examine the words of our mouths, the deeds of our bodies, and the desires of our minds, confessing our sins to him. When we are quick to criticise, but slow to praise others, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. When we bear grudges and find it hard to forgive, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. When we think alone, that uh, we alone are right and impose our views on others, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. When we let evil go unchallenged and are afraid to speak the truth, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. When we are preoccupied with ourselves and give little attention to others, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. When we trust in material things more than in God's unfailing love, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We collect for today, the fifth Sunday of Easter. So let us pray. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve, to the glory of God the Father. We will now have our reading, read for us today by Joan and Dean. The first reading is taken from Acts chapter 8, beginning to read at verse 26. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Kordance Queen of Ethiopians, in charge of the entire treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up, up to it and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I unless someone guides me? and he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silenced before its shear. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? for his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip about who may I ask you? Does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak and started with the scripture. He proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is it to prevent me from being baptised? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more 
and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Artos, and he was passing through the region. He proclaimed the good news to all the town until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our homily this week is written by Reverend Malcolm Mary. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I think this is quite a hard passage to tackle, as it's one that can be read in a few ways. And if it's read literally, it can be quite difficult to square with the concept of redemption, which many of us believe is the cornerstone of our faith. That no one is ever so damaged, so far away from God, that they can't be healed and redeemed. But a literal reading of this passage seems to tell us the opposite. That any of us who are not completely productive will be pruned away and thrown into the fire. I remember hearing a speaker once talking upon this passage and saying that they believed that this passage meant that sometimes we may need to prune people out of our congregations if they were not productive and active Christians. I was shocked at the time and I have, as a consequence, always felt a little bit uneasy about this passage and the way that it can be interpreted. Unfortunately, I think to really get to grips with it, we need to have some knowledge and enthusiasm for gardening, neither of which I have. But I'm led to believe that if you don't keep trimming bits off a vine and rerouting it towards the sun, it just grows into a tangled mess and nothing good comes from it. So pruning can be a good thing. Chopping things off can be a good thing. Yes, to both, but I think that's where we need to be careful and not be too literal. In pruning the vine, what does the vine seeker, the vine dresser seek to do? Are they chopping large sections off or are they just trimming the odd random offshoot to make the whole vine stronger? So the main vine stays intact, as do many of the branches. The bits cut off and thrown away are just the dead bits or the sections which were not going to prosper. That could still fit in with this narrative that any one of us may be cut off from the vine if we don't meet the required standards, but I think that misinterprets the underlying theme. If we abide in Jesus, if we love him, if we hear his voice, then we are part of the vine. Bits may be pruned off us, but those are the unproductive parts of us not us as a whole. God will, if we let him, trim away the selfishness, the greed, the arrogance, the jealousy and the fear which blight our true growth as Christians, leaving us to bear more fruit and better fruit. Not trim us off and throw us away, even when we wither and grow in the wrong direction. Rather, trim off those bits of us that are turning us away and carefully and ten tenderly untangle us and lay us on that path which leads us back to the light. But what does that good fruit look like? Well, I think the epistle set for today tells us that. 
In John's first letter, he tells his readers to love one another because love is from God. Whatever we do, however successful we are, however fancy our car or our, however large our house, if we do not love those around us, we have failed to abide in Jesus and we are becoming knotted vines. John very sensibly asks, how can you say you love God if you don't love your brother or your sister? As those who love God must share that love with their brothers and sisters. None of us are worthy of that love that God gives us. That love is a gracious gift to us. And although that love is unconditional, it only means something. And it will only grow in us if we share it with all around us. If we help all our brothers and sisters to entangle the things that stop them growing so that we together can be the fruitful vine that God calls us to be. It is said that the early church attracted many converts because in a loveless time, people were amazed by how the early Christians loved one another. In some ways, we live again in a loveless time when many seek only their own enrichment and power. And as we come to the end or come out of this pandemic, let us show once again that we as Christians are an attractive group to be part of because of the love that we share one another and those around us. Amen. We come now to our affirmation of faith. Let us now declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the disciples, apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Come now to our second hymn, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace.
we come to our time of prayer, led this week by Elaine. Good morning, Father. It's your love that brings us here together. So let us pray together. Father God, we pray for your church here and throughout the world, that all may be one in Christ. Allow us to grow in knowledge and faith of you. We pray today for our own parishes of Blackrod, Daisy Hill, West Orton and Wingates. We pray for all our ministers, wardens and all who help us to keep alive your word and actions within our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, please bless Elizabeth, our Queen. Give her and her family comfort as they come to terms with the passing of Prince Philip. He lived a life of service. He is now at rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask for forgiveness for all our wrongdoings. Help us to be better Christians, to walk more closely with you. Help us, Lord, to have more compassion for those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. Please, Lord, wrap your healing arms around those who are suffering, those we know personally, those listed on our pew sheets and those for whom a candle will be lit in our churches this week. Give guidance, support and love to all who care for the sick and vulnerable. Lord, we pray for the people of India. May they find help, assistance and some healing and peace in the trials they face during this dreadful pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all who are facing death at this time. Give them faith, belief and courage that all will be well with you. Father, we remember with gratitude our loved ones whom we no longer see, all those who have gone before us to be with you in heaven. Grant them eternal rest in your kingdom. Father, we give you thanks and praise for the endless love and patience you show us always. When we turn away from you, please turn us back to your light. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So as our Saviour taught us, so we now pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Gracious and Holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you. Through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen.